All right, Battle Brothers, it's time to look at what will be the, hopefully, most common fight you're going to run into. Uh, bandits, brigands, etc. Um, throughout your game run, this kind of fight will evolve quite a bit from bands of thugs to raiders to this particular fight is going to have a a brigand leader with them. So that kind of mixes things up a bit. But they also got thugs. So you got a whole a whole mix of things in this particular fight. Uh, so this was a quest from the town up here. They stole the item, which I've talked about before. Uh, usually when people steal the item, there's a great quest to take because it's uh, underpowered or less dangerous than you'd expect for the uh, difficulty skull rating. Uh, this one had three skulls. So theoretically... This is supposed to be a tougher type match, and that kind of shows with the brigand leader thrown in there. Um, if you go into the Battle Brothers wiki, Wikipedia, wiki page, and look at stuff, once you start getting into, like, I think it's day 90 and beyond, or 100 and beyond, if you start taking the three skull missions, uh, you've got a higher chance of running into not only guys like the brigand leader there, but maybe named characters kind of like uh, mini bosses really ultimately and a lot of times those guys will have named items that you can oh, I don't want to fight them yet I bumped my laptop here um, they'll have named items so not the legendary super powerful ones but better equipment than normal you can get uh, so before we fight though let's see what do we have you need to do the analysis so you can make sure your guys are properly equipped and you need to know kind of what you're wanting to do. Um, and you, you might think, well, I just want to go in and kill them. Well, a brigand leader is going to have much better gear and possibly some very nice armor. Uh, so that might be someone, if you have the right setup, you might want to try to stab with daggers so you don't damage his armor and you can get it. So you can upgrade your own people instead of having to buy your own. Um Raiders, realistically, you can do the same thing too, um, but you want to make sure you have either the right equipment or if it's a small group of raiders, you can overwhelm them very easily. So let's take a look. We and There's a few marksmen, so two or three. Do you have the stuff to counter that? Uh, do you want to fully commit and maybe put on the kite shields to protect your guys from the range shooting, or are you more worried about the melee fight and do you want to have the heater shields now I've got again this this particular run for whatever reason I just haven't bumped into hunters so I've only got the one ranged guy which means potentially the enemy may not charge me I may have to advance on them and get shot at a little bit extra this, uh, which sucks normally you want to have more range in your opponent when you force them to come to you it just gives you a little more you get more options you get to shoot at them more and damage them it's just better generally um, because they're raiders uh, a mix of weapons can be best uh, i've got a couple guys with hammer perk so i might as well just have the hammers and they can try to focus on the guys with heavy armor if if i uh, you know at early stages i'm just trying to clear people out and then later in the fight if i'm trying to steal from their raider king or whatever it's called brigand leader steal his armor and stuff they can switch to daggers and i won't bang up his armor um in general the hammer is one of the better perks to pick just in general um hammers there are just certain fights where they're always useful like against orcs there are just lots of heavily armored orcs and being able to hammer through their stuff is useful uh, it's one of the best two-handed weapons um you'll occasionally fight maybe some ancient undead or other champions with just heavy armor and if it's too dangerous to try to uh, finagle things and, and kill them with daggers or steel you just want to kill them fast you need a couple of guys with hammers to just smash the armor up i mean hammers in general if you look this is a level two hammer so it's mid-tier it's only 20 to 35 damage so hammers do less raw damage but it says 200 percent effective against armor so this weapon is doing 40 to 75 damage to the opponent's armor well you can look down here i'll tell you right away 40 to 70 damage to armor and that's just with the regular attack and the if you don't know the special bonus with hammers 
because every weapon has its special bonus, it always inflicts 10 damage to the, op to the opponent's health regardless of their armor. Normally, if an opponent has a lot of armor and you hit them with something, if their armor is fully, completely undamaged and decent armor, your first hit, unless it's with a really powerful weapon, might not do any damage. And then the next hit might only do a couple points of damage to their health. I mean, the, the um, armor is getting damaged, but not much will get through the armor. Even though, if you look at, let's say, this weapon, it says 25% of damage ignores armor. There's a, I don't know exactly how the, the formula works, but if you walk up to a, a knight in heavy armor and you swing and hit him with this weapon, and the guy's armor is completely undamaged, your first swing is not going to do 25% of 40 to 60 damage. You're going to have to start chipping through and damaging the armor. Once the armor is damaged, then some of your uh, some of your attack damage will get through and start hitting health. But the hammer doesn't do that. The hammer, every hit, does 10 damage, which, I mean, realistically, 10 is a decent amount for human type targets i mean you're not going to kill an orc warrior i think they have 200 health or something so that's not a reasonable thing and in the past that's made working with a hammer combo well with the fearsome perk because every hit automatically does 10 damage here and you just need one point of damage to trigger a morale check on your opponent so sometimes in the past that's been a decent combination because you can guarantee every hit forces a morale check um, flails uh, against raiders flails are especially these nice ones either the high tier here or the triple headed ones you can get in the south or even better um, there will be raiders who don't have helmets and you can just use this lash ability and just target the head and you can one shot them sometimes just instant kill which is great now you gotta pick those guys out uh, but it gives you options uh, swords are always handy uh, less so against pure raiders because raiders usually have decent armor and swords. Uh, you, but if you've got hammers, if you smash the enemy's armor with the hammers first, now the guy's exposed and you have the sword go next. Now you're doing a ton of damage. You can kill him quickly. Axes are a good just general purpose weapon. They do good damage to armor and they do good raw damage. Not the best of either, but the best middle ground so it's good to give to someone who's got a a lot of fatigue because they take a little bit of uh, stamina to swing uh, and someone who's got a decent hit percentage because they don't give any bonuses to hit and unlike the flail which ignores shields um, at least with the regular attack the axe doesn't uh, this guy he's got the dagger perk i'm just trying this out it's a little new but it's nice to have somebody who has a dagger in their hand right away with a very high attack percentage so this guy may be able to tie down eventually their brigand the the yeah the leader and really go to work trying to kill him and because you get overwhelm uh, his attacks will lower the brigand leader's counter attacks and maybe keep my guy safer if you have it and you plan ahead some of your guys in the back should have nets if you're planning on trying to steal some armor. And you can toss your nets onto that brigand leader or whoever it is that you want to steal their armor. So when you wrap around them and you pull out your daggers to start t stabbing them, you up your chance to hit. Because this puncture attack that ignores armor and just goes straight to the body, does health damage, has a negative 15 to hit. So if you can put them in a net to increase your chances and it'll make it so they can't run away so much because if you start stabbing them uh, you, you'll force morale checks and they'll try to run anything else uh, raiders have armor as we've discussed already so if you've got someone in your back line that has a high uh, melee skill this guy's at 80 uh, bill hooks are better than the pikes just because the bill hooks do more damage to armor, it's important to chop to the armor quickly. And I have some guys with the two-handed perks, um, but I don't have heavy enough armor for them to safely use that, especially when the enemy has archers. But I think this is a good. I think this is good. We got a little mix of everything, so we should be able to roll in. So let's give it a go. I could wait until night. Uh, again, I, they outshoot me, so waiting until night hinders them more than it hinders me, so I come out ahead. But 
Um, I don't want to have to wait half a day until night. That's just wasting money and paying people and feeding them. So uh, it's worth the risk, I guess, to go in. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look here. Now, again, I've still got that uh, oath right now where my guys start at wavering or breaking, which is a little annoying for the first turn, but I should be okay. Um... Raiders and yeah, thugs, I don't think it matters so much, but Raiders, there's a pretty wide variety of what they can have. So you got to do a quick assessment and see which ones are dangerous, which ones you're going to target. Crossbows are the most dangerous weapon. <laughs> um, they do a lot of damage. They, they pierce armor very well and they will, uh, they can kill your people if they hit them in the head, if they don't have a good headgear. And they can put a lot of injuries on them right away, which even if you win the fight, the guy's got an injury for three to five days and just hurt you going forward for a long time um i see a lot of swords lots of swords among these raiders and you can tell the raiders just buy better armor better weapons that's great because my guys have pretty good armor in the front which means these guys are going to struggle to do any serious damage i don't see pole arms yet but there might have some pole arm guys in the back i see guys with no helmet and this guy has no helmet and no shield so he's going to be um, great to hit with my flails. Now, flails can ignore shields with their regular attack. If you have the perk, you can ignore the shield's regular bonus to defense with the uh, headshot attack. Uh, hail, I think it might be called. Uh, but if they shield wall, uh, they still get the bonus from the shield wall, I think, that your their flail special attack, even the regular one, I don't think, will ignore. So they can be a little tougher to hit. And my flails are down here, which is a little annoying. But, uh, you know, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, whatever, I could just target this guy and kill him. But even if I don't want to use his armor, if I can headshot him and kill him and get his armor, and it's intact, I can just sell it and I make more money off this run. So there's no reason not to try to target this guy with a flail and try to get that armor intact to make a little extra money if it doesn't put my guys at too much risk. The All these little chumps down here, the thugs, are actually just extra help for me. They're not much of a threat at this point in the game. And I can kill them quickly. And when they die, it'll trigger panic checks for the guys who are slightly more threatening. So we're going to wait and see what they do. I have a feeling they're going to sit back and wait. Uh, I will boost my guys' morale a little bit so they're a little harder to hit. Or less easy to hit. <laughs> and then we'll move forward. Sometimes the enemy gets kind of weird, though, and they may throw one or two guys out a little bit. Maybe if these raiders have some throwing weapons, they may come up and get ready to throw, which is great. Once you get in melee contact with somebody, they're much more likely to come up and help and engage. Uh, so, no. Now, I don't remember doing this many years ago, and this game was earlier, but why did he move there? He moved there because I have a ranged threat... This guy has no shield, so he's an easy target to shoot. And if he moves in front, he provides some cover for him. So it's it's decent AI for sitting in the back and uh, just waiting for them. That, I don't know. Well, I guess moving up to the high ground if he's not going to advance. There's the, king, or the, uh, the lord. Let's take a look at his gear. Um... Helmet is very high tier. I mean, not not top tier, nothing crazy, but I mean, it's that's that's a good helmet. That would be very nice to get. Uh, kite shield, blah. That's the top level mace. Uh, maces are kind of like axes. If I recall correctly, they do a little bit more damage to armor and a little less damage gets through or maybe it's the other way around slightly less damage to the armor but a slightly higher percentage gets through um and their special bonus is every time you hit an opponent they get 10 extra fatigue so you can wear people out more quickly with maces and they have the special attack where if you hit you have a 75 percent chance to stun them for a turn and if you take the mace perk that becomes 100 percent that's a very nice weapon his armor uh, it does not look like anything too special. I mean, if you look at... He's a little hard with the shield and the coif here from his helmet. But it looks... His body armor looks the same as this guy's. It's just like a male shirt. So that's not great. 
most of the attacks are going to hit the body anyway. So you could just rush and try to kill this guy with normal attacks, and you'd still have a pretty good chance of getting his helmet, which is the part you want. The faster you kill him, the less he gets to use his mace. Every time you hit something with a weapon, either even if it's just a shield, the weapon takes damage, and the more damaged the item is, the less likely you'll get it as loot at the end of the battle. So in some ways, killing him as fast as possible and not trying to knife him down uh, increases my chances of getting that mace. Uh, but the amount of damage is pretty minimal, so we might still try to knife him. We'll see. We'll see how things progress. We're gonna... All right. Rally everybody, pretty good jump. Um, I'm gonna wait a minute with him, just cause I don't want him to get shot at as much. I want him to stay in the back. But these guys can now start moving forward. And these guys are already done, and again, I don't see, except for this guy, I don't see any pull weapons, which are my major concern. So let's, I want this flail guy to be in contact there. Let's put him here. Let's put him there. Good. This is a, I mean, not a super dangerous weapon, but this guy has no headgear, so he's a nice, easy one shot. Uh, we'll put this guy up here. I don't want to move <laughs> in contact with him on the high ground. He's got a high melee and a good weapon. He will, he will put the hurt on me if I let him. So, um, I do think with all this headless or this helmetless stuff, this guy will probably move here. So I might as well move here. Uh, yeah, if I end up going to smash through this guy's armor, um, it might be nice to have a hammer here. This guy can just kind of screen. Okay, he can take those too. So he's going to keep them from getting too far forward to my squishy guys. Yeah, that's fine. He can go there. I originally thought about having him go up to finish that guy. He really is primed to harass this guy. So we're going to move him to engage here. Um, we'll have one pole arm up top. Who's this guy going to shoot? I could just shoot that guy. He's a nice, relatively easy target. Because he doesn't have a shield and I've got a clear lane I can move into. I could shoot these guys too. I'm less worried about them. So, it's a little danger if I move here because their crossbowmen can shoot back. I don't think, even between the two of them, they'll be able to kill him next turn. And they've both already gone, so. Pierced hand. Uh, might as well move up. And what that'll allow, actually, is I can get someone in here to provide some cover for him. Uh, although that's actually kind of bad. Because <laughs> whoever I put here, he could step down and hit. Not considered that. Uh, he can take one hit. He's got 85 health and decent armor. And then he can come in here. Alright. I don't want to move there with him yet. We'll wait and see what he does. <coughs> Oh, this guy does have the negative to defense because of a fractured elbow. It's a bit annoying because he'll probably get hit by that too. So he may focus fire on this guy just so he can get out of there. Alright. This guy looks like he's shield walling, so he's going to be a little harder to hit. And you can see it says shield wall at the bottom of the sheet there and also inspired by a nearby leader. Um, so I think that means they're getting a uh, resolve boost from him because he's been four, just like the standard bearer gives to my guys. 36, 31. I could. Um, what I might do instead, though, since most of his guys go first anyway, I might wait a little bit and then move him up and do his rally again and just see if he can boost some of these guys to give him a better chance to hit. Oh, actually, that guy's a nice target, too. <laughs> um, this guy... 
I will wait. I'm kind of tempted to step down and shoot at his archer, but I don't want to be there and then have this guy walk down here. So uh, let's wait a second. Uh, we can continue to wait. Continue to wait. He did step down, and that's who I thought he might target. That's okay. We can we can work with that. Uh, wait. Yes. And this guy can continue to wait. That guy can wait. This guy will wait, and I might. I've got a couple options. I could actually potentially shield bash that guy back. If I can kill this guy... Uh, 70. It might actually be worth it for now to try. Good. So then, um, he might step back, or if I can shield bash, I may be able to move someone up here. And to get the high ground, pinning that guy in position would be uh, handy. So, let's wait. Let's shield bash. Yeah... It would be better to have him get up there, uh, but I don't, I don't think he has a real good shot at doing it. Uh, he's going to go first in three turns. This guy is still going to be there. If I move him for this, I move this guy forward. One, two, three, four. Okay, he could do it, and I would prefer to have him up there. So let's move you here. Only slightly damaged. You can see he got hit by an arrow or something. Took 19 points off his armor, but only did 3 damage to his health. Um, let's... I would like to move up here to better chance to inspire these guys to rally, but this guy, I think, is already out, and he needs to have some inspiration. Still not in range, so... That's fine. We're gonna move some people. He might be able to step down again. So let's inspire. <laughs> rallied a couple people, so they've all got, again, less of a penalty at this point. And now we can get to work. Um, 57, 67% chance. This is the more dangerous weapon, in some ways. It's got a bonus to hit, uh, although with my shield it cancels out. Also, more importantly, this has a bonus to hit the head, and I've got really good head armor here. So I'm, I'm happy he's going to be splitting his hits between my body and my helmet. Well, this guy is going to focus more on the body, so we're going to try to hit this guy and just tear him apart. This guy. Good. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I want, actually, to kill this guy, I think. This guy's... Oh, he's in pretty good shape, so let's hit him. Um. Reload. Step down. Good. Uh, again, let's focus on this guy, I guess. So, okay, so this guy is shield walling. And I have the same chance, 33%, to hit with a regular attack or with, what's this called again? Is it hail? It's lash which ignores the base uh, with his, because he's got the, the flail perk. It ignores the base bonus for a shield, but again, because he's shield walling, it does not ignore that bonus for that. So it's the same chance, 33%. Not great. So instead, let's just use regular attacks and try to finish this guy off. And see if he can break some nerve. Um, he's tempting to hit with the pike, but again, I want to try to kill this guy as well. That's good. Um, this guy will do a swing up here and then a shield wall just to help protect him a bit. Uh, he's getting picked at. Yes, that's okay. It's more important just to survive than to get extra hits sometimes. Nope. Yeah, he's, he's in good shape. Uh, I was thinking about shield walling to protect from his counterattack. But because my thief sh or uh, my duelist here will get to go first and will put a lot of debuffs on him, I think he's okay. But you can see that scared him a bit. Uh, he'll step up. 
he's already moved. And again, we can step him down. He'll be one, two, three, four. He'll still be inspiring these guys up here. And one, if he steps there, one, two, three, four. He'll just be reaching that guy too, which is perfect. All right, it is important. Let's see what my chances to hit with a stab. 73 on a puncture, that's great. And he's injured now. He's fleeing already, <laughs> which is pretty good, except in some ways it's really bad that he's fleeing already because I have lots of enemies around. I can't surround him and keep him here, which means when he goes to run, we will hit him <laughs> and we will damage his armor, which is what I'm trying to keep. Uh, however, this guy is very accurate. This guy will hit him and keep him in place. And because this guy has a tiny dagger, he's not going to do a lot of damage to the armor. So instead, this guy can now focus on this guy. Okay. This guy has the fearsome perk, and it is really paying off. I've been uh, liking it quite a bit. I mean... That's kind of annoying, but because he's just a thug. Ooh. Um, because he's just a thug, I think we've still got the edge on taking him out. Although he has terrible melee. Uh, let's hit him. Good. I. Yeah, he's already a little hurt. I don't want to walk up and let that guy hit me. So, step back, I guess. Uh, 44% chance is actually pretty good. I could step up and take a swing at him, but I kind of want to kill that guy. Well, he... I don't know. For some reason, I keep thinking this guy is hurt. I don't do it. A lot of players do like to put the bars on. It just... It just gets a little too messy for me. <laughs> it's a lot to look at, and it kind of ruins the aesthetic of the game. Um, in general, though... Because the game's pretty good about showing you visually how beat up guys are and how injured they are. Like that guy's face. Um, this guy doesn't look hurt at all. He's just been hit several times, but he's got such heavy armor and he's got battle forged. I, I don't need to worry about him so much. But let's hit this guy anyway. I don't know why he's getting hit so much, but. Um, sure, let's keep focusing up here. All right, he's still shield walling, but his, that's a little easier to hit. So we'll go with the headshot on this guy. <laughs> Boom! And again, damn it. He's running, so I can just step forward and I can try headshot on him. And that just, now it's starting to proc. <laughs> oh, because this guy isn't inspiring them anymore, probably. Yeah, it says they're, they're not inspired, so they don't get the bonus to their, their nerve and they're all, their resolve and they're all breaking. So that's great. In fact, I'm going to... No, yeah, I'm going to risk it. This guy's not hurt very much. This guy only has a sword. If I can step up, I can threaten that guy with headshots next turn. Perfect. That was worth it. Um, yeah, again, let's just play it safe. There's, we're not in a risk or rush here. Um, all right. <clears throat> I... Oh... I could move him up there, but if he's here, when this guy runs, the t guy at the top position swings first. I don't want this hammer smashing his armor up. I could move him up here and then switch to his knife. Or, because I think we're doing okay up here, I could step him down and just try to put some hurt on this guy. Or, this guy doesn't actually have much to do right now. I'll wait with him and we'll see. This guy, if he swings and hits this guy, it might be enough. Uh, that's not enough. He's a little scared, but he can still swing next turn and do some serious damage with that axe. So, uh, not enough. Let's move. No, he's got to stay there. All right, let's see if we can finish one of these guys. Good. And he's got Berserk. We can maybe put a hit on this guy, too. Nope. And we hit this guy with a dagger. Scratched literally scratched his helmet and his body armor so not a huge deal that's fine this guy can now move 
up. And I'm going to pull his dagger out anyway. It's a bit... This guy will... Might... Nah. Since the dagger on puncture does so little damage, I'm probably not going to kill this guy next turn. And these brigand leaders have nine lives. So if I stab him and kill him, he won't die and I'll have to hit him again. Maybe twice because they've buffed that. He gets a little bit extra health now. So um, let's... This guy is kind of exposed to these archers. Let's move him down here. He's still inspiring all these guys and him. All right, what can we do? One, and they're too tired now. That's another reason I was worried. Um, I could swing at this guy with a regular attack. I, I don't care. This guy's not a threat. No, oh, okay. I don't know that didn't help him. Oh, oh. So, oh yeah, I did talk about sitting him down. You know, if he had walked down, swung with a hammer, uh, the hammer, again, because it doesn't do a lot of raw damage, probably wouldn't have done much to this guy, unfortunately. That will do some damage, though. All right, uh, this guy can't go. We're going to attack with these guys and cycle them down, probably, and then he can step in and swing. Um, I want to headshot that guy with him, so let's hit this guy. Mm. Mm, I'm going to have to wait, and he can move up here and hit these guys in the back. Yeah, trying to shield bash so I can get him away <laughs> and then run. Probably a good move. Um... So I got a couple options here. Actually, this might seem a little weird, but I don't think this guy's at risk. Let's just go ahead and stab that guy, and it'll make the headshot more likely to one-shot and kill him if I pull it off. Uh, I can stab here. This guy is not very good at melee, um, but he's got nothing to lose, really. I'm not worried about him. This guy can come through. Mm, do I switch? No. Well, I'm concerned because this guy doesn't hit very well. If this guy runs, he swings next and can do some damage with that flail. So, yeah, we'll switch. Whatever. Um, boom. Dead. Um, that guy's pretty hurt. His helmet is almost completely gone. So, maybe we can do a headshot on him. 47. 57. Let's go for this. Why not? Wouldn't call it a Hail Mary, but it's worth a chance. Um, let's have this guy step down and hit that guy. And again, this guy also has Fearsome, and because his resolve is sky high, when he hits stuff, it breaks. So that's great. Um, yeah, let's just finish this guy off. Perfect. Uh, he can come back down here. No, he can't. He's too tired. I was going to protect this guy from being shot, but... Uh, step... Up, oh, I can swing at both these guys. Good. And uh, too tired to swing again. He gets knifed some more. These guys are sticking around. I gotta give them credit there. Uh, let's move him here. This, because now he can swing at these guys, may may prompt them to move away and stop shooting at my guys for a turn, which would be nice. And I can hit that guy, too. In fact, we can do that. Well, that'll prompt him to move away as well. Uh, it's not over. We're going to run him down. And we can get a lot of loot from these guys. Uh, let's keep hitting him. Nine lives. Too tired to swing again. Uh, that guy... Yeah, whatever. He wants vengeance. Uh, he may as well keep going the rampage. Let's hit. So, I mean, of these two, this guy's a crossbow. The full crossbow. There's a light crossbow. So this is a more valuable weapon. So I'm going to make sure I kill him and try to get that. Or I can just miss. Uh, sure. Hit whoever. Stand. Good. Um, who is that? Is he armed? Oh, he's got a dagger out. 
I want to try to get someone in contact with him. He can't get over there, but we can keep moving. Uh, sure, keep moving. All right. These guys are just running, so let's get in contact and just lock them into place. This guy can lock these guys into place. In fact, we can go here. This guy, even if he runs, he may try to get that way. And just do some more headshots. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> and now we're just cleaning up. Oh, he missed. Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point, but... Whatever. Now, this is also a good time if you've got, like, a guy you're trying to level up, you want him to get kills. You know, you can just let everyone wait and let the guy you're trying to get kills take the swings, but I'm not worried at this point. Uh, sure. There we go. All right. So... Overall went pretty well. Uh, I don't think this guy again got a little little close to death, but he survived. I don't think anyone got any injuries, which is great. A couple levels up, and let's take a look at the loot. I did get the helmet because it was only at 94% damage. I don't know what armor he had. Um, I think it was one of these. No, I had the little these little uh, gambeson like padded things. So it may have been, which is unusual for a bandit leader to have this kind of crappy armor but either way it didn't look like great armor but I got the important part I got the helmet got some nice swords and swords are some of the more valuable weapons I mean look at that it's 66% and it's worth 825 now obviously you won't get that much for selling it but you'll still get a decent amount uh, I did not if you notice get that guy's mace um, he didn't swing it much uh, but it was damaged enough there's not a hundred percent chance to get it and I did not get it unfortunately I did however get that crossbow and again crossbows at 72 percent and that's worth 546 so pretty nice pretty good haul overall that's some decent stopgap armor if you need it so good haul good run good work good luck in your future bandit killing endeavors it should be a staple for you uh, you get good experience you get good loot which means good money and especially early to mid game some of those bandits if you kill them with a little bit of strategy and protect their armor uh, you can upgrade your guys very quickly uh, which will pay off dividends in the long run so good luck kill bandits and uh, conquer your enemies <laughs>